We are about to start. I hope you can see my screen. Let me start also the recording. Okay, recording started. So we will start with the summary of uh, what was uh, discussed and agreed yesterday. And then we will move forward with the program. Today we have only one hour, so we will try to be brief and to the point. Yesterday, a presentation for partners of the GSP in Asia was given to introduce them to the topic. Although they might have already known, we really try to give them a good understanding of what the GSP is and what is their role so that they can better contribute to the implementation of activities in the Asia region, especially. Thereafter, we went through the new GSP action framework and made a reflection on how we can adapt the, the governance of the region to the new GSP action framework. Actually, we prepared a brief survey uh, uh, to, to, let's say, come to a, a better understanding of what the region would like to have in terms of governance. Uh, and uh, we will launch. Uh, we will launch it after this meeting. Actually, we were thinking to already have some polls during this meeting, but since to, the number of participants uh, in the meeting at present is low, I think it's not appropriate to to launch it now. Maybe we will launch it at the end of the meeting if time allows. Um, thereafter, there was also a colleague. Uh, of ours, Ms. Silvia Pioli from the GSP Secretariat that presented the results of the, soil, the, the project the Soils for Nutrition in Bangladesh and linked it to the implementation of the Global Soil Doctors Program. In this regard, she also advertised the program and um, looked eventually for, farmer, for promoters to implement it in other countries. Today, we will start with the presentation on data management and mapping activities by my colleague, Mr. Yusuf Igini. Then we will move to the presentation on the Center of Excellence on Soil Research in Asia, CESRA, that will be provided by colleagues in Thailand. And then we will close with a reflection on the ESP work plan 2022-2023. So my colleague, Filippo Benedetti, Will, uh, will guide us through the decisions that were made in March at our latest ASP meeting and uh, uh, see how we reflected the, the previously agreed work plan in the new GSP action framework. And maybe we can have also a discussion on how we can further improve our work plan looking at uh, one year of implementation and looking at the new GSP action framework and the financial resource available. Now I would like to give the floor to my colleague Yusuf for his presentation on soil data management and mapping activities. Yusuf, the floor is yours. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, Lucrezia. Morning and good afternoon to, to the colleagues from, from Asia. It will be a quick and brief update uh, on how we have been doing, what we have been doing since last year. And I want to also inform you about, about the things that uh, are quite important this year. Let me put some slides on the screen. Uh, most of you know very well that we have been developing series of global global data products because GSP has a, has a very strong uh, area of work is it's, which is called soil information and data. What we have been doing, we have been developing systems and developing data products. Systems are, we are supporting countries uh, in establishing national soil information systems, in some cases, regional soil information systems. In parallel, uh, we are developing a global soil information systems. Uh, I say systems because we are, we are developing soil start, glosses, and some uh, other components of, 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 of glosses, including uh, global monitoring of, of, of soil resources. Uh, we have been, okay, system development 
has been interrupted a bit because we started developing a new action framework. It's called GSP Action Framework, uh, which will be in force uh, from, uh, from, from, from this year. So we, we wanted to get in line with the new development. Uh, the GLOSS development and National Soil Information System development will continue, continue soon from, from September. Uh, but we didn't stop developing data products. Data products here are global data products. Global data products are country-driven uh, global data products, uh, which uh, were developed by countries. We are just here facilitators as GSP. Uh, where we are right now with the global data products, you see on the screen the GSOC map, the global soil organic carbon map. Uh, we launched the first version back in 2017. Now we reached to version version 1.6. It's still alive. GSOC SEC, the sequestration potential map. It's a global map. Uh, we launched in 2021. We updated to version 1.1 in 2022 in the beginning of 2022. GSAS map was launched in 2021 during the symposium of uh, Global Salt Affected Soil Symposium. And GBS map and some uh, Asian countries is also part of this map, the Global Black Soil Distribution Map. Uh, it's a product of uh, INBS. INBS is International Network of Black Soils and uh, INSEE also. Some INSEE members contributed to to this initiative. Uh, it was launched during the plenary this year, during the 10th plenary assembly of, of, of GSP. Uh, we are planning to update also this map. But I want to, to, I want to say more about the upcoming data products. Uh, we, ha we have two upcoming data products. One is global soil erosion map. The other one is GSN map, global soil nutrient and nutrient budgets, uh, budget maps. So these maps are coming with a series of uh, data products. They are not uh, like uh, one map or what a series of maps. GSN map, uh, this year GSP's team is uh, Soils for Nutrition. Uh, it comes very timely, we started developing the global so nutrient and nutrient budget maps. Uh, where we are right now, we uh, we had the concept note. Now we are about to publish the technical specifications and country guidelines, guidelines document, which you, including Asian countries, ASP countries, will receive soon. And uh, we will. We are planning to start the capacity development program in, in September, like uh, like any other global data product, because the, they are all coming with uh, like a, a full package, the series of technical documentation, uh, technical menus, training material, and uh, training material and uh, capacity development. Cap capacity development is is usually implemented as. Uh, regional training sessions, region, regional technical training sessions for GSR map and GSR map. We are planning to start in in, in September. Uh, global nutrient and nutrient budget budget maps are, are timely and important because uh, we 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 see around that historically high input prices, including fertilizer prices. Uh, they have been driven by, driven by current global challenges. Uh, it comes with even more challenges in food security. Uh, fertilizer prices uh, also. And here we want to go and start touching farmers' lives. Now we want to do something more local than, than, than ever. And uh, what, we, what we know is, is data-driven like evidence-based management solutions are needed uh, for farmer resilience, then the GSR, GSR map will pro provide soil nutrient as well as soil nutrient budget maps. We will see the, see the imbalance or balance of, 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 of selected uh, soil nutrients. 
to optimize the sustainable manage, management of soil nutrients and sustainable management of, of fertilizers, uh, fertilizer applications. So these are the uh, like bullets, uh, like telling the importance of GSM map. GSM map comes in two phases and being developed along with the GSM map. GSM map is global soil erosion map because uh, erosion is one of the most important factors uh, when we are talking about uh, nutrient budget, nutrient balance, and nutrient imbalance as well. So phase one, we are developing of soil macro and micronutrient maps uh, plus some associated soil properties. So these are like coming as individual uh, soil nutrient maps, which will be happening this year. So in parallel, we will start with GSAR map. You already received uh, the GSAR map technical uh, specifications and country guidelines document. For GSAR map, you received uh, the concept note and some countries from Asia, uh, from Asia, they reacted, they commented, they, they, provi they provided some feedback. Uh, yeah, the second phase is, is it will be more important because it will be relying on the on the outputs of the first phase. Uh, also, the outputs uh, will be will be coming from the GSM map. So we will be developing soil nutrient budget maps uh, at global scale. So the the goal is having the nutrient budget maps for. And P and K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So we started developing the methodology. Then the, it's almost final uh, because uh, now uh, we have also the GSM Map Working Group. They are supporting us, including ITPS. ITPS also overseeing and supporting and uh, providing uh, overall scientific guidance to to GSP. Uh, the timeline for the for the nutrient budget maps, uh, I said that it will be relying on the first uh, first phase outputs. First phase outputs will be will be launched uh, most probably on the World Soil Day, uh, twenty twenty two in December, fifth of December on the fifth of December. Right after that, we will start with the nutrient budget maps. The plan is having nutrient budget maps by mid of mid of next year, mid of next year. Uh, it means that uh, okay, we have the plenary plenary meetings, GSP plenary meetings. Usually in May, June, we will be we will be trying to launch the budget maps next year. The process. Uh, I'm sure that you are very very much familiar with the, with the process. GSP has established a very. Uh, a uh, very good country driven uh, process it has proven that it works well it produces produces uh, nation uh, nationally meaningful global data sets uh, it uh, it increases capacities within the countries bringing uh, national uh, thematic soil maps which are also meaningful at global scale because we all, we have also a global agenda uh, global challenges global agenda agenda what we are trying to do is working with countries, helping them, getting help from them, uh, developing something at national scale, which will be useful for countries, for data-driven policy making, uh, will be also useful for, for FAO, for other international organizations, including USCCD, for example, IPCC also, uh, to, to help to address some global challenges. So these maps will be, will be useful at all scales. At this point, we already ask countries uh, because we are working. We have been working with INSEE. INSEE is the International Network of Soil Information Institutions, which is the main implementation body of the soil information and data activities. Uh, almost okay, not almost, but uh, we have 20, 120 countries are represented in INSEE. We ask them uh, putting. Uh, the national focal points in copy 
to nominate their national experts in soil nutri nutri nutrients or nutri uh, soil nutrition or soil fertility, I would say here, and soil erosion. So, so far, we have not received so many nominations because of because of some limitations now it's summertime in Europe at least it's summertime uh, things are getting slower so I would like to like reiterate here that we need your uh, nomination for both maps uh, national focal points if you have any in institution or in representative here in the room so I will share this these links with you it's a very short form. Uh, for both 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 maps, we are just asking to nominate your national expert in these topics. We will start working with them. Uh, we will share soon the capacity development program agenda. So we will most probably start in Asia uh, by mid or by end of September with an international with a regional uh, training on mapping soil nutrients associated soil properties, as well as the soil erosion. So erosion here will come with uh, several layers as well. Here we are talking about uh, water, tillage, and wind erosion. Yeah, I will share these links uh, in the chat. Uh, any questions, any inquiries, like uh, you can just uh, directly write to me or one of one of the soil information and data colleagues. I, I know that uh, some of some of you will be in contact with uh, other, other colleagues at GSP dealing with soil information and data. So I will be here also during the meeting. If you have any specific questions, just uh, you can just write in the chat or you can just raise your hand and. Uh, we can discuss and I can elaborate at the points that uh, you might need more information. Lucrezia, it's over to you. Many thanks, Yuzu. And indeed, I am opening the floor for questions or requests for clarification. Can you hear me? Now is better. Okay. I was opening the floor for questions or requests for clarifications. If you need of time to reflect on what you just presented, then you can also take some time and write in the chat or write him an email directly. Okay, Yusuf, you are staying with us, right? For yeah, I'm for... I said. Okay, it. perfect, thank you. So please use the chat or raise your hand at the end of the next presentation. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Pitayakon from Thailand for the presentation on CESRA. Mr. Pitayakon, the floor is yours. Yes, you can hear me clearly. Yes. <laughs> I, um, every time I, I ski now, eh? So, so the, I will uh, present the Chesla uh, in in progress and then the activity this year, and also invite uh, all of you to join the Chesla. Chesla is the center of excellence of the soil research in Asia, and is the hub of a research institution for the advancing of our resource on the soil protection, management, restoration, as a bit in 2018 and uh, hosted by Kingdom of Thailand. Uh, on the basis, the soil is the fundamental of the life on the earth, but the human pressure on the soil are reaching to critical limits. So the further uh, loss of the productive soil affected the national economic and could potentially send the million of the people into the poverty. This problem is avoidable through the sustainable soil management, which can increase the food supply and also provide the 
pathway for the safe protection and encourage the ecosystem services. That the uh, achieving of the SSMU generates the great benefits for all community and uh, nationals. And the main mandate of the CHESA is working on is the building of a capacity of the CHESA member country on the sustainable soil management following the demand driving approach that is very important matters. The next is to promote and extend knowledge that are technicals of cooperation and experience in this region by the assessment of the assist and courses. That is uh, usually also directly in charge in this, and then uh, that is the soil, internet, inter soil information system in the Asia level and global level. To encourage the inter and transdisciplinary targeted soil research and development of the SSM tool and the technical to the technical uh, cooperation. The last one is to promote the education on the sustainable soil and land management and uh, encourage the partnership with the multi stakeholders. Uh, how uh, you can join uh, the Chiesta? I think uh, the scope of the Chiesta is to provide something like uh, cooperate and exchange the knowledge and experience to with the other institution on the soil research in this region, very important. Uh, not only the research, but also the participate in exchange program and training on the soil related topic in different country. Uh, we also important to seek the, the funding source and the co-funding to support the cooperation among the members. Uh, not only the contributes and also the benefits from the create of the legion, regional hub of the soil data and research paper, access the wide length of the tool and also research site. That uh, means uh, we, we can uh, carry out the same resource topic, but in the different uh, site in the each member countries. That is very important the, the way in the futures. The last one is to connect uh, to the other network with the within and beyond the region, uh, something like uh, co global soil laboratory network and the international network of the soil information institution institution. And uh, who can join the Chesta? In the first uh, Chesta, I think that to strengthening the the resource activity and uh, training, uh, we looking in the resource institutes, uh, center, organization, university is very welcome uh, to register in the Chestra. Uh, at the moment, at this moment, we are thinking that the individual uh, will not uh, suit to, to register in the Chestra member in, at this time. Uh, this is the status of the member of the CSRA. Now we have the 21 institute from the 10 countries. A half of that is uh, institute in, in Thailand uh, that is uh, involved about this uh, soil scientist uh, department uh, in the university and also in the the uh, department uh, involved uh, directly or indirectly of the soil science. Uh, the list of uh, that list is uh, nine country. The list is uh, showing that one, including Thailand. Uh, in this case, uh, we also have uh, institute database that uh, I think uh, SP member also know that one. Dr. Yaki also uh, create uh, that database with the GSP. And then uh, I take a look on that. Uh, we have uh, 17 institutes in that list. Uh, and then uh, some country also uh, have uh, three or four institutes in that, something like in case of India, have a four 
institute involved in that lease. Thailand also three, Sri Lanka also two institutes. I think in future, Chesna also use that uh, database and then uh, direct contact to the contact person and then uh, let uh, them know about the information about the Chesna and the registration form and invite them to join uh, this uh, Chesna member. This is a very important document that is the registration form. Uh, you need to identify yourself and also address of the organization and head of the organization. And important one is the contact person, very important, and then cited in this document. This, this document you can download from the website of the Chesta, chesta.ldd.go.th. You send it back to the Chesta secretary in that uh, email address, spchesta at gmail.com. And then Chesta will uh, send you back the certificate of the official member of the Chesta. Another part of the Chesta, uh, we want to uh, let you know in the activity of this year. The first one is the workshop of the best practice of the salt effective soil management in Asia. We will the creator of the SSM best practice from SP member countries and upload into the CHESA website. That is not for the CHESA itself, but for the other member countries. Now Thailand also share uh, 12 of the that the uh, practices. At first, uh, we start with the salt affected soil and we think that we will go further to the other matter. Uh, we choose that one because the uh, GSP dream uh, last year emphasized on the salt affected soil. And uh, we would like to invite the member countries to join that uh, workshop where we will be here in Thailand with by on-site and online allow much uh, next, next year. Another activity is just also establish the e-training course on the diagnostic skill on the soil limitation for the certain agriculture consists of the seven subjects. The first is knowing the soil for beginner, uh, soil limitation and quality uh, simplifies of the techniques for diagnosis of soil in phys physical, chemical, and biological qualities. And also the soil limitation analysis by the soil quality assessment. And the last one is the soil limitation management. Uh, we will launch uh, in the TESA website on the October this year, 2022. Another activity is the platform of the data sharing. Chesa also has been the developing the network system on the data sharing on the soil information and soil research for the all members. The link, the linkage of the ACs and courses also be be developed later. Uh, this system will be ready to the member to access on the December this year also. And the last important activity of the CHESA is the CHESA forum. Uh, we, will, uh, we will establish in the, the, the third week of the December, that in the next, next month on the 19 to 20, of the September 2022, next, next month in Bangkok. And then uh, we decided uh, to invite a member, Chesa member country to join uh, this uh, forum on site. And uh, if uh, someone cannot uh, convenient to join, uh, we also provide the online uh, 
for for them and the participant is the all member country or just a member and also uh, interested uh, to interested to join that one the forum is uh, need to something like uh, clarify some point of the chesta also because uh, gsp gsp is uh, have a transit transition uh, period of the framework and then uh, something is changed and then we need to consider uh, some point in the chesta operation and structure also need to to clarify and have the discussion and need uh, uh, you and all of the member country uh, to comment and have the idea on that one. Another another point of this is uh, we need to uh, go further of the activity of the Chesta. Uh, we have uh, more discussion in that forum. I think. Uh, uh, this uh, activity will be useful for the Chesla to go forward in the research and training for this region. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And I think uh, maybe Chesla staff and Lucasia also add something more for clarify uh, Chesla activity in this uh, moment. Thank you very much, Lucasia. Thank you very much, Mr. Pitayakum, for presenting and introducing uh, uh, GSP partners from Asia, especially to Sajra, because this might be something new to them. So the take home messages from this presentation are, well, if you are in an institution or an organization that works on soil research, please register to Sajra so that we can all join efforts towards his mission and objectives. Um, we will send you the registration form again by email. Thank you very much to all of you that already completed it and send it back uh, to the CESRA Secretariat. Uh, you will receive a, a certificate of registration very soon from Thailand. Those of you that did not register yet, please do it because as you can see on screen, there will be the first CESDRA forum in September. This is an important event. <coughs> Excuse me. This is an important event to discuss the work plan of CESDRA, but also really to discuss your participation, so the participation of countries to CESDRA's activities. Now we finally have a good number of members in CESRA, 19 so far, as far as I uh, remember. 21, sorry. It's good, so they, they, they increased. So at present we have 21 institutes from 10 countries, the ones that you see on, see on screen, but uh, we want to become bigger. So please motivate uh, even institutions or organization working on soil research or also on soil in your country to register to CESDRA. And if uh, you are from a country that is not a member of CESDRA yet, please uh, make a double effort because we would like uh, CESDRA to be very regional and interactive. And uh, those that register in CESDRA are very welcome to join the first uh, forum of CESRA in September. The event, uh, as far as I understood, will be hybrid. We will, uh, well, CESRA and Thailand will make uh, an effort to bring some participants from other countries to Thailand. But, uh, well, CESRA members uh, are also invited uh, to look for financial resources themselves to join the meeting in person. And uh, those of you that cannot go to Thailand are welcome to join online. Again, the meeting is for CESRA members, so please register. I see a hands up, so Jayanni, the floor is yours. Uh, hi, Luke Reza. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask questions. Thank you to uh, Sir Satira for presenting on the CESRA uh, initiatives that they are doing. Um, I was just thinking because um, if at all that uh, the 
the forum is open to members outside of SESRA, we can also use it as a way to promote it to our respective institutes. Uh, like from where I'm coming, uh, it will be best that we get the head of department to have a look at uh, what is happening in SESRA uh, before they even uh, give approval for registration. So this is my opinion, Lucreza. I have seen this, but in order to convey this to all the other research institutes uh, which is working in soils, either by the focal point, uh, by country, or the ITPS members, it will be good if uh, SESRA could send an email regarding their forum uh, for an open discussion or to see what they are planning to do or doing. Uh, to engage more institutes to be involved and register in the SESRA group. Thank you very much, Gianni. Um, Mr. Pitayakon, if you want to complement. Just, uh, I think, uh, as I said in, in the presentation, that uh, the first is uh, from the member country just like members, but also including the, the institute that in, interested uh, in Chesla also join. But uh, maybe uh, we will provide something like uh, online for, for your convenience to join that uh, forum. Thank you and you're in, interested. Thank you, Mr. Pitaya. Maybe uh, if we can get an email from SESRA regarding this to, all, to the focal points, and we will be able to distribute this to our respective institutes to be uh, joining the forum that you are going to do. Thank you so much. Yes, I, I suggest you to contact the focal point and then take a look on the institution and then the, the register to the Tesla first. And uh, I think that you can leave uh, your email address in the chat. Uh, we will contact you by email and also directly contact with the, to the focal points of uh, Malaysia also. And uh, we have a list of uh, international uh, of the institution of the Malaysia. And uh, we also send uh, this message to that, that institute also. Gina, Philippines, please. Gina, I see your hands up. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank good you, morning. Dr. Lucrecia. Yes, good afternoon. I hope my signal will sustain me. Thank you. So first, I'm very pleased with, uh, can I have my comment on the two presentation? Or Cesra first. Hello. Hello. Gina, ah, yes, you. okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Udon Sri, for the presentation. So, <laughs> on Cesra, yes, um, I think this is a very welcome uh, opportunity, um, not only for the Bureau of Souls as the national. Uh, um, focal point of the Global Soil Partnership. I am just thinking about uh, how it can be done um, to involve as many. Um, um, are the institutes um, registered to you directly or can we do some kind of, uh, we will tap uh, existing uh, partnership and network at the uh, uh, Bureau of Source and Water Management and bring it to CESRA for registration? Or can they register individually as an institute? Because I saw in your presentation that aside from country, you mentioned about institute. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. I think yes. uh, I take a look at the list. Uh, the Philippines also did not uh, register, and then thank yes. you, so you uh, mentioned to register to the to the <clears throat> to the member of the chest. Uh, another point is uh, for the forum. I think uh, you is uh, SP member 
And then uh, we, we also invite uh, you to join uh, that forum also. Very valuable people for uh, suggest and comment to the to the chessa activities. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, sir. So I'm just thinking about uh, in our registration. Um, okay, so we will register first, and as much as I can involve or all, all the other members of the Philippines. Thank Just, you very uh, much. Gina, what, what do you uh, say again? Because uh, we, we have uh, some uh, messages. So again, that you need something else? Yeah, we lost you, Gina. At the end of your intervention, we lost you. Can you please repeat uh, your closing uh, statements? OK. So the question is, uh, we are interested to register. Sorry, I, I did not notice the registration form. I'm happy to register. Um, the second point I would like to raise is uh, we have established a Philippine Soil Partnership, but this was not very active. And I see CESRA as an entry point to activate this group. So my question is, if I register in CESRA as Bureau of Soils and Water Management, um, um, can I register all other members of the Philippine Soil Partnership as an institute? How, how are we going to be counted? By the national uh, focal point? or individual institute within the country. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Gina. I think uh, this solution, uh, I will clarify something like this. Uh, at first, I think uh, your, your institute uh, is the, the main, your bureau is the, the main of the soil science in your countries. That is another institute uh, also, can join the CHESA member also. You can write out the, the register from only that and then identify yourself and also mention about the focal uh, contact person and then send back to the to the CHESA. Okay, Any okay. Of the... it's okay. I just write also thank okay, for thank some you. details. Thank you very much, sir. Very yeah, nice you're presentation. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Gina. Is there any other intervention from the floor? If not, uh, I will give the floor to my colleague Filippo for presenting the ASP work plan 2022 2023 that was agreed by the ASP in March so that we can open the discussion on this. And uh, as we did uh, for the data management and mapping uh, activities presentation, you are still uh, welcome and encouraged to ask questions or make any statement on CESRA in the mm -hmm. chat. Yes. Uh, colleagues in Thailand will kindly um, answer your messages in the chat. Again, thank you very much, Mr. Pitayakon, and also thank you very much to all those that intervene. Filippo, the floor is yours. You we cannot hear you. Turn on the sorry, turn sorry. On. Excuse me, my apologies. I mean, um, sorry, I will start from the beginning. Uh, this item is about uh, the new uh, GSP action framework, uh, as it was uh, presented already by Yusuf today and by Lucrezia yesterday. Uh, as you know, 
Um, we have a work plan of the Asian Third Partnership that was discussed and endorsed during the last Asian Third Partnership meeting in, in March. And uh, uh, the point now is how uh, the activities that we decide to, to implement uh, would fit with the new GSP action framework. So uh, instead of pillars in which areas of work and activities will fit, um, this is the action framework as uh, presented yesterday by Lucrezia. And then you can see here we have the six action areas that are uh, basically replacing the pillars of action. These are, uh, these are called uh, manage sustainably and restore soils for the provision of ecosystem services, uh, strengthen soil governance, promote knowledge and literacy on soils, promote awareness raising and advocacy on soil health, assess, map, and monitor soil at in an harmonized way, foster technical cooperation, including gender and youth. And youth. Uh, well, this is the, the action framework of the GSP. And now the challenge is how uh, the activities um, that we decide to implement in the, in the pillars under the pillars of action would fit under the new action framework. Uh, therefore, like I try to uh, summarize in this table that I will present you all the activities that we uh, that we discussed basically during the last days and sort of partnership meeting, and to see how they fit into the new uh, action framework. Uh, under pillar one, we basically uh, discuss about rec soil. Uh, if you remember this big uh, umbrella program where many initiatives uh, may fall in. Um, and in Asia, uh, the, pro the project direct soil is under implementation in, in the Philippines. But again, we, the, we, we discuss uh, my colleague, uh, Karina Cardoso, who is in charge of the program, uh, ask all interest countries to contact her to get more information and to start discussing about the implementation of this uh, recarbonization of soil basically program in, in other countries of the region. And this activity, which is Rexall should fall into the, the areas of work this name uh, manage sustainably and restore soils for the provision of ecosystem services. Uh, then, as you know, there is the Soil Atlas of Asia. Uh, just to give you a, a quick update on the status of this activity, uh, it is ongoing. Uh, well, these days, there is the World Congress of Soil Science in Glasgow, as you know, and uh, um, will be a, a kind of pre-launch uh, and there is an in-person workshop program in September uh, to take place in Vietnam on digital soil mapping and data management. Um, and the Atlas will be pre-launch in Korea uh, in, so in September, while the official launch is planned to, to take place in December 2022. Uh, this activity, so uh, we expect to deliver the, the Atlas by the end of the year and the atlas falls into uh, these areas of work this promote knowledge and literacy on soils then as you know uh, we discuss about the policy brief and we uh, together with um, dr z and dr uh, wakar we we uh, the policy brief was implemented was start uh, was developed basically it's currently under review uh, we, we had some issues with the internal fao style um, regulations let's say uh, but we hope to be able to deliver the text in autumn and this activity falls into the soil governance and the promote awareness raising advocacy on soil health say is something between these two areas of work and regarding the policy brief i you may have received an email from me yesterday uh, i kindly ask you uh, to um, to share any picture you have on on soils from your country uh, from the asian soil, from the asian region um, because we would like to to report in the policy brief uh, diverse photos as diverse are the soils of the region. So, so far we have mostly uh, photos from, um, from Pakistan, but it would be nice to have photos from other regions as well of the, from the region as the policy brief as a regional perspective. So you are strongly encouraged to share with us any photo you have in equality about soil and, and farming landscape that may fit with the policy brief scope. And then there is the Global Soil Doctors Program that was presented yesterday by my colleague Silvia Pioli. Uh, as she mentioned yesterday, this was implemented in Bangladesh, and there are also um, action in Thailand and Philippines. Again, any interest countries and focal point, please co uh, contact 
Silvia Pioli and Carolina Oliveira, my colleagues in charge of the programs of the program to, to know more about uh, how to uh, implement the program in your country. Uh, and this activity will fall under um, the area of action of promoting knowledge and literacy on soils. Uh, then there is the, um, an activity on soil governance. If you remember well, in, in April, we, we organized a, an online webinar on soil governance in Asia. Um, and this was implemented with success together with uh, Ariel and other partners uh, from Europe, Asia, and the Pacific. Uh, the recordings is online. Um, if you're interested, we can share them with you. Um, and these activities, so the activity on soil, on soil governance, uh, let's say fall under the umbrella of uh, strengthening soil governance. Uh, while for Pillar 3, uh, there was the activity on the base on soil research and development that was um, started by the former uh, pillar feature Katsuyugi from Japan, uh, but unfortunately, under the current framework of the GSP, this activity uh, is not that feasible. I mean, it doesn't uh, fit with the new GSP action framework. So we still have to think on. Uh, we still have to think on how <clears throat> this can be um, included in any of the areas of work I present to you. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, currently, these activities is. Uh, um, let's say is 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 on uh, uh, is suspended because we don't know really how to fit it with the new JSP action framework, and we have to um, discuss more on uh, if and how to continue it. And I still want to like to to thank colleagues from Thailand because they proposed to take over this activity during the the last Asian Soil Partnership meeting. I remember uh, Peter Yakon then proposed uh, to to continue this activity, but first we should find a way to fit it under the new action framework. So uh, this is why we are still uh, um, not proceeding on this. About digital soil mapping and uh, in C network, uh, um, it fell under pillar four in, uh, before. As, as my colleague Yusuf Igini present you, uh, um, we are following up with country and uh, we are encouraging countries to nominate country, country experts. To, to join different working groups for different maps. And these would fall under the areas of work of assessing, mapping, and monitoring soil health in a normalized way, while um, the same areas of work will, will uh, be included uh, SILNET. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, I was in bed. Um, the Asian Soil Laboratory Network, as you know, uh, is a network grouping together all soil laboratories operating in the Asian region. Um, this, uh, this network is, is having its own governance, it, its own, um, its own uh, uh, work plan. And I think would be nice, uh, this is a nice example, uh, as Lucrezia mentioned yesterday, uh, of an activity where we have a clear entry point for the region. So we have a chair, a vice chair and a steering committee making up the governance of CNET and uh, uh, meaning that for this activity, in case the Sun Soil Partnership would like to, uh, to know more of this or to contact CNET, it, we can easily contact the chair and the, and the vice chair of, um, of CNET and involve them in our activities. So this activity will fall under the same areas of work of INSEE, that is assess map and monitoring soil health in a harmonized way. Um, there was a proposal from the last Asian Soil Partnership meeting raised by Dr. Gina Pinilo from, from the Philippines, and it's the current chair of CILNET. That is the identification of a center of excellence for regional laboratories uh, with the acronym CIRLAB uh, to be implemented, uh, to be, let's say, established in the region. Um, and the proposal may be to include this uh, center of excellence for regional laboratories under CISRA, uh, as CISRA is the center of excellence uh, for uh, uh, for research on soils in for the Asian region, uh, why not include uh, the proposal of establishing CIR lab under CISRA? This is something we may discuss, and we may share this proposal with uh, colleagues from Thailand and from CISRA. And um, let's say this uh, the proposal of, of creating this uh, regional center came from Philippines. But uh, me and Lucrezia were thinking to propose to collaborate with CISRA to uh, establish this 
it's a new entity that can uh, be as a reference for all laboratories operating in the region and also some, somehow um, helping in filling the gap between soil researchers and uh, uh, laboratory staff members that are, who are the people who produce actually data on soils in the, within the labs. Uh, so these are all the activities in the Asian Soil Partnership Work Plan as we discussed during the last meeting in, uh, in spring. Um, and these are the new, uh, uh, let's say the new areas of work. So meaning that we will not talk anymore about pillars of action, pillar one, pillar two, and so on, but we will talk about these new, uh, let's say areas of work uh, that are reported on the rightmost column of this table. Mm. I would like now to open the floor and, um, and see if there is any comment from the audience uh, regarding these activities or any need of clarification on this new framework or under which umbrella this, each activity should fall in. And uh, if you have any need of further information on any of these activities or uh, reported here in the work plan of, of Asia, uh, of the essential partnership. And again, this, um, this work plan will be revised during the next Asian Soil Partnership meeting in, uh, in um, between March and April 2023, we will make um, an update on the current status on these activities and discuss about new activities to be included in the Asian Soil Partnership work plan. So here is just a way, um, uh, a quick presentation to discuss about this, uh, the current status of these activities and the new framework in which all of them should fall. So if there is any question from the chat or um, uh, or from the audience, I see some some um, a, a comment from uh, Dr. Shinivas about uh, including the um, uh, the regional uh, center for excellence on soil laboratories under CISRA, maybe a nice idea. Um, we can you explain more what you mean by soil that indices development? Would you like to include this activity or establish a working group or work for, to work on that? Um, Dr. Srinivas, if you can clarify in the chat, um, would be nice. Uh, other intervention from the audience and from uh, the chat are welcome. So if you want to share any opinion on this or you need any clarification on this work plan and the new action framework in which it fall, please, the floor is open. Or everything is everything clear, which maybe. I know it may be challenging now because we all should get uh, familiar with these new names and areas of action. Uh, but as you may see, these are really linked to concrete actions and uh, um, and, uh, and to the soil threats. So we hope that the new action framework and the new areas of work um, will help us as GSP and you as GSP partners and focal points, and especially within each country uh, to implement easier uh, the, the activities and, um, and connect with other uh, with the other partners and other promoters and other activities in an easier way. Uh, this is the, one of the goals of having this new framework to organize better the activities and have, and have them uh, um, better organized. But I don't see any question from the chat or from the, on, from the, from the audience. I would like to ask colleagues from Thailand what they think about this proposal, if they think we may start discussing about this. So the proposal to establish a, um, a center of excellence for regional laboratories that was proposed by the Philippines and Dr. Gina Pinillo as chair of CINET uh, under the umbrella of CISDRA. Uh, would you think that this is something feasible that we may uh, continue the discussion on this? Or do you think there is no uh, possibility to implement this under CISDRA? 
and also it would be nice to know if Dr. Uh, Dr. Nero agree with uh, this proposal. Yes, uh, Filippo. Yes, please. Yes, uh, uh, let's respond uh, in your uh, matter. Uh, for the cell net under the CHSA, that is a good idea. I, uh, uh, the CHSA staff also agree on that. Um, uh, when we standing CHSA, uh, the last uh, two years by funding of the FAO lab, uh, we create that activity with the Dr. Nomani. Uh, we work together in under the CHSA. Uh, we also have uh, the network of CHSA and network of the cell net and also in, in Thailand also. I think uh, that is the good idea on that. Uh, great, thanks. Thanks for your statement. Um, I would like to know if colleagues from Philippines uh, Dr. Gina Nilo, I don't know if she, she can hear us uh, or she has connection issues, if she would agree um, with this proposal. So because Dr. Gina Nilo proposed the, the establishment of this center, and uh, I would like to know if she would agree to implement it under, under CISRA. Uh, otherwise, we can even follow up by email on this regard. Is any other um comment of what i presented on this new on how let's say convert the work plan into the new areas of work well if no look uh, look let's see, i think we can uh close this item i was wondering uh, because yesterday some concerns on uh, it's we can hear you very well huh? oh, sorry um i was wondering because yesterday some on the interaction between the traditional focal point, uh, the partners, and other stakeholders from Thai in each country was raised. I was wondering if we should include an activity on the establishment of the national soil partnership. There are still little in, uh, in Asia, and maybe can be the solution to improve the communication. So I would like to ask you and the audience what you think about this. Can you please repeat uh, because the volume is very was very low. We, can, we cannot hear you very well. Be, can you hear me? Now is better, yes. OK. <laughs> so yesterday, concerns were raised on the interaction uh, between the national focal points and the partners, but also other stakeholders on soil. In, uh, in, in different countries. So I was wondering if we should include in the, in the work plan at the establishment of the National Soil Partnership that maybe can be the solution to tackle this issue. And also I see there are comments online, Filippo. Yeah, uh, I would agree with your statement about uh, having this National Soil Partnership as a, as a powerful tool to connect and, and encourage the cooperation among the different actors in, the, in, in, the, in each country. So partners, focal point, and so on. Uh, in the chat, I'm, uh, I'm seeing a question from Dr. Srinivas about who is, um, who is leading. Please contact my colleagues. Carolina and, and Silvia to get more information on that. I may put their, um, their uh, uh, email address in the chat right now, so you can contact them. Um, while um, for the, con the, the comment from Lenny Francisco, second, uh, it's about Philippines, I think the best is you to contact Dr. Gina Nilo because I know she has um, uh, the CNET uh, and, and the Philippines Soil Laboratory Network is, um, is, 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 is like is including many, many laboratories from all uh, from different parts from the Philippines. So I think they are also in, in touch with the um, local laboratories. So please. Uh, Lenny, if you have any, any way to contact Dr. Ginanillo, that would be nice. Otherwise, um, uh, we, can, uh, we can give you the address if you send us an email. Mm, 
I see not many agree with Gina of the establishment of, of, uh, of, the, excellence, of the Excellence Lab Center and the CISDRA. Um, so yes, there's, I think there's a, a, like in a, a positive feedback to continue the discussion on this. So we may go on um, establishing this, uh, this regional laboratory center and we may uh, need further uh, time to discuss about this. Maybe we can organize a, a separate meeting to start the discussion with, with a um, contact person, persons of, of CISRA, of SILNET. We can start discussing about on this to see uh, how one can be, uh, let's say, developed. Is there any more comment on this? It seems no to me. I don't know if Lucrezia received any private message from the audience. No, no, I think we are fine. Okay, um, so we will share as usual the recording of uh, this meeting and also the minutes of the meeting with all participants. And we will follow up uh, to some activities like uh, CESRA. We will send you again the registration form uh, as discussed, you are welcome to distribute it among your network. Uh, also, we will launch a survey on the new governance to get an idea of uh, uh, the proposals that are, let's say, more acceptable for, 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 for the partnership in response to the new GST action framework. And um, I think that's it. So we can close the meeting. We thank you very much for your time and also your flexibility to meet also today. We very much like to interact with you. Also, thank you to all the partners that joined. It was a pleasure to have you here and also the ITPS member. And you will see that in the survey we will send you, you will have also space to propose how to improve uh, these meetings, the regional meetings and also to get more visibility and the possibility to intervene more. So we're looking forward for the survey results. We thank you very much. We wish you a good day, afternoon or evening, and please do not hesitate to contact us by email in case of need. Thank you very much also to all presenters and see you soon. Bye.